Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using this Spring Medley 3D embossing folder, the Lovely Layers Magnolia, the Spring Greenery, and then this is um, a newer uh, sentiment set. It's called The Best of Everything. It's a really, really good one for covering just a lot of bases. So I am going to be die cutting all of my pieces parts out of white and then I will be doing some coloring. So in concentrating on this video and kind of building out a bouquet, I know that I have the magnolias. In my head, the magnolias, I'm going to have one large one and then like a half one. So I'm trying to pick out pieces that I think will be complementary. So the Magnolias are kind of short and stout. They're a large blooming flower. So in order to pick out something that's going to balance that nicely, I wanted to bring in color with another flower, but this one's going to be a bit longer and thinner. And then the magnolia leaves are, again, kind of short and stout. So I wanted some kind of longer leaves um, that would fill up my bouquet nicely. And that is how I chose the dyes that I was going to be working with. The reason that I'm, I'm cutting them all out of white is because I like to color mine. I feel like that gives me the best dimension with my dyes. Um, and I am using my Bitty Buzz cutter to do uh, all of that. But you can cut these out of colored cardstock if you aren't going to be doing any coloring or if you want it to maybe be a little bit quicker. Um, there, I mean, it will be just as beautiful. The dye is cut and... Um, also emboss details into each layer of the flower uh, or leaf. So um, either way would be fine. Um, I pulled out the magnolias because they're one of the first lovely layers that Honeybee ever released. And they keep releasing more um, because they're beautiful and they're very popular. Uh, but sometimes I think it's kind of nice to go back to the older stuff that we have. And it is spring. Magnolias typically bloom in March and April. Um, and so I thought it would be nice to kind of revisit that flower to combine it with some of the newer stuff, like the spring greenery is new, um, to get more out of it, which I'm a big fan of. A tip that my friend Dawn told me, because um, she does a lot more die cutting than I do, uh, is to always cut more than you need. Because while you already have all that out and you're in the die cutting mode, um, that way it gives you a couple of buffer pieces. Um, so I did cut a few more than I needed for the greenery. I did not for the magnolias outside of the centers, and that's just because I was worried about losing them because <laughs> they're kind of small. Um, and then we're going to move on to the coloring. So you can do this however you would like. I wanted more of a like pink center white-ish magnolia. Um, and so that's how I'm coloring mine. I'm using my Copic markers to do that. You can use any coloring medium that you have um, that you enjoy using. Uh, this is just alcohol markers are what's comfortable for me. So for this first layer, I'm just going to color the whole thing. For the next layer, I'm going to use the first layer in order to kind of like just trace the edges where my shadows would be coming out from. And if you've watched my other videos, you've seen me do this before. This A puts my shadows in the right place and B cuts down on the amount of coloring I have to do because that whole middle section I can leave white because I am going to glue the colored section uh, from the next layer right on top of it. So I don't need to color that in. Um, and then you can see here, I'm just checking to make sure my, um, you know, shadows go all the way to the edge and they do. And then I will take this piece and then trace it um, onto the next layer, so on and so forth. So for this magnolia, this is the full magnolia. So I did show you the coloring for um, this full one. I'm not going to show you the half because I colored it exactly the same way. So from here on out, I will show you one of each thing, and then um, we will get into talking about how to build the bouquet. Uh, because I am a colorist and I enjoy coloring them, I have to color them before I can build them, <laughs> and any tips that that may come with. So if you're only here for the tips on building a bouquet, which is totally fine, you might just want to jump a little bit ahead uh, because we are going to be doing coloring for a little bit here. So if you uh, watch my channel, you know that typically we have a little bit of story time. And so I, the long, long and short story time today is um, we are just, you know, sometimes as a homeowner, it's just not your time to shine. It is not our time to shine, y'all. 
it's not. So we had the basement that flooded. Um, that's a whole big long thing. And then um, we uh, just today we've been having um, thunderstorms in our area. I think a lot of people have. Let's talk about these centers real quick. So for the centers, I chose to do um, more of like a golden yellow brown. Um, and so I did color in my lightest color um, on the section that will be the lightest. And then on this piece, it overlays it. This one, I showed you how to do it. It's kind of hard with these smaller pieces. And sometimes I just hold them in my hands and kind of mark it with a pen because that's easier. Mark it with a pen. Mark it with the marker. Um, but really, because this is such a small area, you don't even necessarily need to trace it. Just add some darker shading up from the bottom, and, and you should be good. Um, on the second piece, I mean, and not on the first piece. The first piece, I just added a little bit of darker shading in the middle, so I guess in my head, everything kind of made sense, and then when everything um, was done, I went over it with my lightest color just to make sure that everything blended, and I was happy with the way that that looked. So now we're going to move on to the leaves. So part of building a bouquet is paying attention to your colors as well. And so in regular card design, you know, just in any kind of card design, you want your colors to look nice together, particularly in putting together kind of floral arrays or bouquets. Um, you want your colors to look nice together, um, but you also want a kind of a variety of greenery. So you, I shouldn't say you want. You, you can go one of two ways. Either they should all be the same color or there should be um, some kind of variety to break it up. Just like you would see in a floral arrangement that, you know, um, you would purchase or somebody would send to you. You see that there's lots of different types of flowers. There's what they call filler flowers, you know, which maybe are a little bit smaller or um, like uh, baby's breath or Queen's Anne lace. Like th those are more like filler things to just make it look fuller. Um, but typically you do see a lot of different colored greenery because it's going to not only make it look fuller, but it's going to make it look more interesting. So when I was picking out my colors, I wanted them all to work really nicely together. So I went with a yellow green for these. That's what you see me coloring here. And typically I just kept my uh, shadows into the center and along the veins. Um, the veins are embossed by the dye uh, right into it. So they're real easy to see and, and follow along with. But so I chose a yellow green. And I'm going to use the same yellow green combination for, I think they're hyacinths, lavender maybe. I don't know. We colored them purpley blue. So whatever they are, they're pretty. Um, but I also colored those the same yellow green colors. For the magnolias, I went with more of a like uh, darker kind of true green or a Kelly green. Um, and again, I'm just adding shading where the lines are, where these lines are already embossed. Um, but this plays really nicely with those yellow greens. Um, so they, even though they're two different colors, they're close enough that they're not going to compete with each other, that they're going to balance each other out really nicely. The third color I added in is a little bit kind of out there, um, which is a blue green, but I didn't go with a bright, I went with a more muted, um, so the blue-green that I combination I will be using is in the 70s, which just means it has more grade. It's a little bit more desaturated. And you might not think that that would go, but it's actually a really nice kind of softness to break up the bouquet. If you are having any questions about whether or not your colors go together, before you even start doing any of your coloring of your die cuts, just take a scrap piece of paper, kind of mark them all down, see if you like the way they look together. If you don't, just just take one out and put a new one in. And you can keep trying that until you find a bunch of combinations that you like or that one special combination that's going to work for you. So here is this, um, this kind of tall leafy one that I'm going to use my blue greens for. And then um, that will be all of the leaves, I believe. Leaves, 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 leaves. I'm saying the same word, but differently. 
I don't know why. Leaves with a V. V like Victor. We're moving on from this because I can't. So anyway, um, our basement flooded and then um, Peanut came home. He was on vacation with his dad for spring break and he had like kind of a cough and he wasn't really feeling too hot because he didn't get a ton of sleep or eat really well. And I guess they got bad ice cream one night and he got sick and, you know, he's just exhausted from, from traveling. So we were juggling that. Then it's been thunderstorming here, which means like the one night we went down there and cleaned all the water out of our basement and then it rained again and then there was more water, but then we had clean parts. So then we were getting new water in new places. It was a thing. Um, here for these, I'm going to do stippling. You don't have to do this. This just provides a lot of color variation and I think it's super pretty. I think it's a, an easy way to get in lots of shadows and highlights without really having to work too hard for it, which is really what I'm all about. Um, so I'm just doing a bunch of dots all over the entirety of this um, kind of flower head. And I'm going to do that with all four colors. You can see that the way that this die is cut, um, that there's holes in it. And so when you put it onto its um, stem, you can see through it. And currently, my the top is mine is white. I didn't really mind the white. It wasn't too bad. But I decided that I was going to go in with one of the violets, which was a little bit more on the pinky side, and fill it in with that. Alternatively, if you had cut this out of green, the green would show through, which I think would also be okay. Um, but I went with this kind of pinky purple color, just because I thought it was pretty. So... Um, and then you'll see the how it kind of looks all together. There's also that bottom portion. Um, there's a piece to die cut that out as well, but I knew I wouldn't be able to see it in my bouquet, so I skipped it, you know? Because when you're a person who doesn't truly love uh, die cutting, um, you know, my heart is in stamping and coloring, um, <laughs> you take shortcuts where you can, and I could take a shortcut there. So now I'm just going to glue everything together. Really, the only layers I have to put on are these little flower heads and then building the magnolias, um, which can I just say that I totally love the way the magnolias came out. I think that they are so pretty, this little soft pink white. Um, just I super love them. So glad I picked them to work with today. So then after all of the putting together is done, um, I will then start talking finally, <laughs> halfway through the video, I will start talking about building the bouquet. Um, <clears throat> I apologize. I am losing my voice. And I, every time I am having to pause it and then restart, and I literally just paused it and restarted less than one minute ago. And so now you may just have to listen to me clear my throat. I can't. I can't keep, I can't keep doing it, folks. I just can't. You just, you'll have to suffer. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, building these magnolias, super easy. We're just going to stack these layers on, on top. And again, this is the full magnolia. For the smaller kind of like side magnolia, I just left off the last layer. Like the base layer, I just didn't use it. So that made everything um, just a touch smaller. And I could kind of tuck it back behind the larger magnolia, which looks, you know, fully opened. That's the intent of it. Um, but then I could just kind of tuck it behind and have a smaller version, which would help balance my uh, floral bouquet, which is really what we're going to talk quite a bit about in building the bouquet. Balance is a huge thing. So uh, in picking my colors, you can see we have a nice little array going on top. I knew that the pinky whites, they're pretty neutral. They're going to match almost anything. I probably could have colored my other flowers just about anything I wanted, but I went with that purpley blue because I thought that it com complemented the pink as well as the green tones that I had selected. Um, so, be, I mean, really because of this pink flower, like because it is more of a neutral, uh, it really wouldn't matter too, too much. So... In the middle of all this, he, Peanut is sick, and then um, we just got a phone call from a neighbor that our tree branch, like one of our tree branches broke, fell on our fence, and fell on the neighbors, like partially on their deck. So yeah, we're just in it to win it, y'all. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the, the florals. So here, if you were just doing the magnolias, like you can see, I faced one of them straight up and one of them kind of off to the right. This is going to add just some movement in the bouquet. 
And then the same thing with the leaves. So I, I need to balance the design. I have a that flower, that half magnolia up at the top. I'm putting some greenery behind it. And as I'm putting greenery behind it, I am putting greenery down into the bottom left to balance it. It doesn't have to be the same greenery. It doesn't have to be the same of everything, but you do want to create that balance. Here with these two little purple flowers, they are the exact same height, um, which is not going to be pleasing visually because your brain, when there's a pair of something, like when there's even numbers of something, your brain automatically tries to pair it. When you put something at exactly the same level, you're making it look almost a little static, like it has no movement. Um, and so on the top right and the bottom left, I have a pretty good balance. This top left is not balanced. There is not enough in that top left to balance my design, no matter how many little purple flowers I put there. Like, it's just not happening. Um, so this right now, this is not a balanced design. So how are we going to fix that to change it? I can see that the top left is the problem that I'm having. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and switch over to a slimline design, which would give me more room to expand up and down. This is the part of the video that normally as creators we cut out because it's kind of boring to watch. Um, you know, just doing the same thing over and over again. Most people just want to see the end result. But if you're genuinely trying to learn how to do something for yourself, you have to watch this part of the process to see how many different ways we try it before we find what works to make a unified, balanced design. So here now I'm starting building from the bottom. I know that I like that look at the bottom. And I know that I like these two little leaves on the right-hand side. So those are going right back to where they were previously. This top portion is the part that I have to work on. So I knew that the left-hand side was definitely didn't have enough of what I needed. Um, and so I'm not using the yellow green leaf on the right hand side anymore. I'm going to save it and move it to the left. This is another reason why my friend Dawn, who works with die cuts all the time, tells me to cut more than I need. Because when you're in the middle of building your bouquet, you may find that you just needed this one more thing. Um, and you'll have it because you already die cut it. So now here you can see this design is unbalanced because we're heavier at the bottom than we are at the top. So something else has to go up at the top to balance out what we have going on at the bottom. So I know I'm still going to use my three little flowers and I'm going to kind of tuck them in. Typically, I would work in odd numbers, like I would not use four flowers, but because by the time the design is over, two of those flowers look like they are one, I felt like it was okay. <laughs> I felt like it was okay. So now here, I'm adding in this extra magnolia leaf, which before I did not have over there. And so I'm adding that in. I'm also making this side taller before everything was kind of on the same level because we were working on an A2 size card. And I'm making the left-hand side just a little bit taller. And so here, this is without the yellow green leaf. It still does not look balanced. We have to put this leaf back in. And you may be tempted to just put it in the middle, but the middle is not going to give you a balanced look either. It's just going to make the top look really, really full and the bottom very scant, which is not what we want. So now looking at this, I can see my middle is empty. So I have, I'm starting to get a little bit more balance on the top and bottom, but I've got nothing in the middle to balance out those two kind of green leaves. So I'm going to scoot them up just a little bit to kind of fill in that right hand side. And then I'm going to start scooting the stuff on the left down. So I'm going to tuck in that leaf there. I'm going to start scooting down some of those, um, purple flowers just a little bit. I'm going to make one of them taller and I'm going to bring one of them down. So now we're creating height. We're starting to get a much more balanced look at this point. So we have some on the bottom, that large floral. And then here's me back again, <laughs> back again, trying to make sure that I'm happy with how it looks. 
So I have those purple flowers together. One is definitely taller than the other. That height is going to help us create some more interest movement. Um, and then these little flowers over here on the right hand side are going to help us balance the flowers that we have down into the bottom left. This is, and if you've watched my videos, you've heard me say this before, like, that I get tired of having to chase the die cuts around. This is the part that I'm talking about. Like this is the part that for me, like where I put one leaf in and everything moves. Um, but it's just kind of the nature of the beast. If that bothers you, I have in the past put a little bit of a repositionable adhesive on the back of all of my pieces so that that way, once I put them down, they will stick at least long enough for me to be able to move things around it without it just flying off. So once I am happy with the way that it is looking, I knew that I wanted to um, do the 3D embossing in the background, but I don't want to have to rebuild this whole floral bouquet. So now I'm going to pick up the entire thing with the press and seal. So I'm just going to lay this piece over top of it. Typically, I would use the hinge method, but I'm going to be honest with you. Both my kids were in bed. One of my kids was sick, and the press and seal is so loud when you rip it off the roll that I just couldn't risk it. So I had to use the piece that I already had ripped off, and it wasn't big enough to do the hinge method. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with the hinge method, I will link that video at the end. Um, because it's incredibly helpful. So I picked up the whole thing with press and seal. Now I'm going to take this piece. This is the, um, the slimline piece. And this is an A2 size. Um, well, it's a little bit bigger than that, but you know what I'm saying? It's not big. It's not a slimline 3D embossing folder, but do I care? Absolutely not. I'm going to use it anyway, because it's beautiful and it makes everything look like lace. So here you can see I ran it through one way, I flipped it around, lined it back up, and then ran it through the other way. There is a little bit of a line that you can see where kind of the two meet. I am just going to place my the widest portion of my flowers over that line, and honestly, in the finished card, you cannot see it at all. Not even kind of, not even a little bit, not even sort of. You wouldn't even know it was there unless you watched this video. So, here, I am going through and I am adding glue to the very base leaves. Um, these are going to be the first ones that stick down. Because I just tucked in my pieces underneath, you'll see <laughs> um, that one of the leaves is actually laying over one of the base leaves. Um, and I'm just going to cut it off because it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. And that way it's not interfering with my base leaf adhering. So again, I'm going to make sure I'm lining this up so that the widest part is over that line for my embossing. And then I am going to press my leaves down. Then I will pick it up again. Uh, whatever we didn't adhere down, adhere the next layer, so on and so forth until the entire bouquet is built up. The hinge method is easier than this, but this is exponentially easier than what we were doing before, which was, you know, basically just trying to glue them in the same spot after we took a picture. What a nightmare that was, right? I'm so glad that's over. So in moving that, I did this one little piece, um, decided that it was going to stick down even though it wasn't its turn yet. So I just went in and adhered it uh, myself before I went in and added anything else. And I just made that the tallest one because I could see from my floral bouquet on the left um, that that is the one that was missing, was the one that was super tall. When you do this, you do want to make sure that you go back in and make sure everything is secure because even though we're putting down the glue on each layer, sometimes you have one thing laying over top of one another. And so the thing that's on top of the other thing, I feel like I'm speaking in code, the thing that's on top of the other thing, um, doesn't get glue. So you just have to make sure that when you go in, you're making sure everything is um, super secured down so that your card doesn't fall apart after you give it to your recipient. Um, and this, I mean, the Honeybee Be Creative Glue is great glue. So you just have to give it a second to dry and then it's going to hold um, beautifully and you shouldn't have any problems with that. So here, now, the only thing that I have left 
um, that has not been glued down is my magnolias. Everything else has been glued down. So the base of all my leaves, I, this is me going back in again, making sure everything is secured and glued down. Um, I am going to put my magnolias on top of it, but I don't want to glue my magnolias to a loose leaf piece um, and run the risk of it falling off. So now for these, you could definitely leave them on the press and seal. Um, and for the small one I did, just to get the placement correct, uh, put the press and seal back on there, glue that down. But for the big one, I'm just going to peel it off the press and seal and glue it myself um, because there is, there's no longer any need because that is the last largest piece. It's really easy, but you could leave everything on the press and seal if you were like, I 110% am in love with this arrangement and I don't want it to move one iota. So now everything is glued onto our background. Here, <laughs> I felt like it was a little bit too long. So it it's originally at seven and three quarters, or I'm sorry, three and three quarters by eight and a half. So I decided I'm just going to trim it down from the top and bottom to make it three and three quarters by eight. You guys, this is crazy. Watch what happens. Watch, just watch. Just you watch. And this is why you should not force things. So I go to cut the line and I kind of catches on the paper. This wouldn't happen if you had a guillotine trimmer, by the way, but I force it. And what do I do? I completely ripped off the bottom of my card because that 3d embossing has so much texture of the part that it pushes up it actually makes it a little bit thinner and since i insisted on just shoving the slicer through it tore my paper 110 percent my fault i should not have done that but i did i cut it by hand um if you have a guillotine trimmer that won't happen <laughs> but i don't um well i do but i don't use it so anywho, I ended up trimming it by hand. It was fine. It, it ended up working out fine. But when it first happened, I was like, no, I've glued it all down. No, <laughs> no. Oh, good times. So here I am stamping my sentiment. Um, super cute. It says you bring a smile to my face. Um, and I'm stamping this in our gold metallic pigment ink. And um, I just, I didn't emboss it. I thought about it, but I just wanted to keep it kind of soft because everything else in the card is. So I stamped it twice to make Make sure that everything was nice and solid and then I'm going to cut it out with its coordinating die. Don't forget if you buy these honeybee sentiments, any of them, all you have to do is flip your stamp set upside down on top of your dies and it will immediately point out which one goes with which sentiment. Honeybee, so smart. Um, so I pulled that out, die cut that out. I'm going to adhere that kind of down into the bottom left because again, you know, we have this kind of open area there, uh, which the sentimental snug in nicely. And then, um, I did a couple little detail things cause that's just how I roll. I use the, is it, mm, is it the marvelous ones? I think it is the marvelous ones. Yeah. Marvelous moments. Um, so I use some gemstones from there to just kind of accent the sentiment. Um, and then I'm going to go in with a white gel pen and I'm going to add some highlights to the centers of the magnolias just with some dots. And then I'm also going to add some white dots onto those little flowers, hyacinths, whatever they are. Um, I don't know. I did a video last week where it was very clearly a hyacinth and I called it a hydrangea the entirety of the time. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, because my brain said so. And then I added some shimmers to the edges of the petals on the magnolias, as well as to the um, little hyacinths. And then that is it. That's the whole cart. So I hope this helped you see the process, how to find some balance with your floral bouquets. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.